Hi. In this video, I want to share with you an article about AI that was brought to my attention by my friend and former student, Zach Robinson, when I interviewed him recently for episode 47 of my Life After Philosophy podcast. This was episode 47, The Scientist. Uh, Zach mentioned to me in the course of our conversation about AI that uh, this an article was published last month, and last month for us now is in June of 2025. An article was published by Apple showing, he thought pretty decisively, that uh, the current generation of AI models, LLMs and LRMs, large reasoning models, are not capable of uh, learning, how should I put this, not capable of reasoning algorithmically. They, they cannot generalize across a large data set to generate and apply an algorithm. So uh, perhaps I've said that wrong. My, my field is not uh, computer science or uh, LLMs, but I want to share with you the paper, and I'll give you a link in the description below so you can check it out. Here it is. The Illusion of Thinking, Understanding the Strengths and Limitations of Reasoning Models via the Lens of Problem Complexity by these six authors at Apple. I'm just going to share with you part of the paper, but like I said, I'll make it available to you. There's no date on this document, but I am told that it was published on June 5th, 2025. For those of you who don't know academic writing or scientific papers, first thing to do is always to look at the abstract, which gives you a summary of what's to come. Uh, this one's quite long, so I'll just uh, give you my read through of the key parts of it. It notes that we don't really understand fully the limitations of AI, both in its large language model and then in these more advanced large reasoning models that have been developed more recently. In this work, they say, we systematically investigate these gaps with the help of controllable puzzle environments that allow precise manipulation while maintaining consistent logical structures. What they've done is they've switched the test from math problems or coding problems, where you look to see, does the AI, given a problem, produce the right answer? So you're just asking right answer, wrong answer. They switched this to giving it a set of problems that are scalable. So the Tower of Hanoi is one of these. In the Tower of Hanoi, you have the disks which you move between three pegs. You've probably seen this even in, in restaurants or small children's toys. The idea is that you, by increasing the number of disks that you start out with, you can increase the complexity of the puzzle, but the underlying logic of the puzzle, including the algorithm that's that needs to be applied in order to solve it, remains fundamentally the same. So they used this type of test instead of the more traditional, the, the uh, up until now, type of uh, test to check to see on the reasoning abilities of these AIs. Okay. It also allows them to check the internal reasoning traces. We'll see those later down in a lower part of the paper. What are the intermediate states of a large reasoning model as it goes through trying to it, the process of finding the correct answer? What does it look like along the way, looking sort of at its, its thoughts, so to speak? How does, it arrive at, how does it arrive at the conclusion that it arrives at? Through extensive experimentations, this is one of their key findings. We show that frontier LLMs, this is as of mid-2025, experience complete accuracy collapse beyond certain complexities. Once you get up to a certain level of complexity, for Tower of Hanoi, it looks like it's about eight disks accuracy goes to zero. Like even the most advanced AIs cannot solve the puzzle as they've structured it here, even when they, well, we'll see, we'll see what happens there. So uh, even the most advanced models seem to hit a ceiling beyond which they just don't get it. They cannot generalize more completely to a solution. Moreover, a second conclusion, these AI models exhibit a counterintuitive scaling limit reasoning effort increases with problem complexity up to a point, and then reasoning effort declines, despite having an adequate token budget. So uh, reading tokens here just as the amount of resources that the computer can throw, so to speak, at the problem. The computer generates more effort, so to speak, up to a certain point of complexity. And once it hits that collapse point, or shortly afterwards, it actually decreases its draw upon its available resources in trying to continue to work through the pro through, through the puzzle. That, that, that is counterintuitive and unexpected. We'll see that below in a moment. And then they say by comparing the 
um, LRMs with standard LLMs under equal equivalent computational s structures, we find three performance regimes. So here, here's the overall structure of their results. Low complexity tasks, they perform the same. LLMs and LRMs get the, get the right answer consistently. Medium complexity tasks, the additional thinking res uh, resource and cycles of reflection and, and self-correction in the LRMs gives it an advantage. It can maintain accuracy at levels where the LLM's accuracy goes down. And then high complexity tasks where both models experience complete collapse. That's fascinating to me that that's the current state of play with respect to these types of problems. We found that LLMs have limitations in exact computation. They fail to use explicit algorithms, and they reason inconsistently across puzzles. And one of the things we'll see later on is that even when the algorithm is known to the AI, it fails to make use of it in actually solving the problem. So that's the abstract. Let me take a look now at just a couple sections of this paper it, uh, and give you some of my thoughts about them. The beginning sections here, they just talk about the types of AI that they're going to be using. They give you a kind of a description of the, the structure of Tower of Hanoi, moving disks back and forth. This uh, first set of charts is coded by the authors with these bands of color, uh, yellow for low, low complexity tasks, blue for the medium complexity tasks, and red for the high complexity tasks. Uh, and what we see here is that for the uh, number of disks for the Tower of Hanoi, accuracy is very high for both Claude 3.7 and Claude 3.7 thinking. That's the large reasoning model with the additional resources, the additional cycles and programming. And But in the blue zone, the LLM accuracy falls, and the thinking model falls later, but just as rapidly uh, as we get up towards eight disks. Above 8 and 10 disks, we're in the red zone where neither model is capable of achieving a high degree of accuracy at all. Uh, response length number of tokens used. The um, see something similar happening here. The reasoning model is using more tokens. And then curiously, even though it's working on hard problems and not getting the results, it's using fewer tokens in its attempt to do so. Okay. Similar fall here. Our empirical investigation reveals several key findings about current large reasoning models. First, their sophisticated self-reflection mechanisms learned through reinforcement learning. The models fail to develop generalizable problem-solving capabilities for planning tasks with performance collapsing to zero beyond a certain complexity threshold. And that means that, in a sense, they, they don't really get the Tower of Hanoi puzzle. This is a point at which, if you think about it, um, you are able to see what you have to do to solve a Tower of Hanoi of any complexity. It just takes a long time. There's 250 moves required to do uh, eight disks, for example, 255 moves. That's a lot of shifting disks back and forth. But if you count up where you're even and your odd number disks are, it, it's not hard to see what you have to do and then do it. The computer can't see this, it seems. The, the LLMs are not making that generalization. And then they talk about these three, reveals these three um, zones, the yellow, red, and the blue zone. Uh, and notably, near the collapse point, LRMs begin reducing their reasoning effort measured by time tokens as problem complexity increases, despite operating well below generation length limits, right? They, they could, I take this to mean, they could be throwing more resources at the problem, but they, but they, but they aren't. Okay. In a human, I would attribute that to frustration or fatigue, but neither one of those obviously applies to an LLM, so to, to, uh, to an AI model. Let's see. A couple other things here about the way in which this is still a summary of their findings. Um, there's a scaling limit in LRM's reasoning effort with respect to problem complexity and a decreasing trend in thinking tokens after a certain complexity point, the two points I've just put out. And we uncover surprising limitations in LRM's ability to perform exact computation, including their failure to benefit from explicit algorithms and their inconsistent reasoning abilities across puzzle types. This is essentially saying what was summarized also in the algorithm 
So there's a summary here of large reasoning models and how they work, of the type of puzzles that they're going to be using. I'll leave that to you to explore. A few of the charts here. Thinking versus non-thinking models across mathematics benchmarks, we find that the blue lines with the thinking models outperform the LLM non-thinking models. That would be expected if we're looking for who gets the right answer and sometimes with, with what token budget. But what happens when we take these uh, puzzles like Tower of Hanoi, the checkers jumping puzzle, the river crossing puzzle, you've seen maybe versions of that as well as a logic puzzle, uh, and a block stacking puzzle. These are each described in section three here. Accuracy of thinking models across all puzzle environments in these same three zones of complexity. Tower of Hanoi, Claude uh, LLM, Claude 3.7 Sonnet plus thinking. Same th what we saw before happening here. In the blue zone, the LLM collapses, followed shortly after at level seven or eight by the thinking model. Same thing happens with deep seek thinking versus non thinking. And curiously, we find a much steeper collapse for the other three types of puzzles where the LLM model performs below, but it's pretty joined above a certain level of complexity by even the LRM models. So there's this description now of the first, second, and third regimes. Um, measurement of peak performance of thinking versus non-thinking models with equivalent computational budgets. The curiously here, what, what we'd expect to see here. In the yellow zone for the easy, low complexity puzzles, we find that the LLM is actually more efficient. It achieves a higher degree of accuracy at a lower computing budget. The LRM gets there eventually, but with a less efficient use of resources. We find that the LRM is actually performing better uh, in a sort of efficiency, you know, peak performance uh, contrasted with its token budget uh, in for the blue level medium dif medium complexity puzzles, and then they both completely flatline at the level of the at the pink um, high complexity levels. So I want to look a little bit more at these sections about section collapse. Right, we observe that reasoning models initially increase their thinking tokens with problem complexity, but on approaching a critical threshold which closely corresponds to their accuracy collapse point, models, surprisingly, counterintuitively, they say, begin to reduce their reasoning effort despite increasing problem difficulty. Despite still having, we might say, some resources to invest in the problem, they invest less in trying to solve the problem. This behavior suggests a fundamental scaling problem, limitation to thinking capabilities of current reasoning models with relative to problem complexity indicates perhaps that simply giving more computing power is not going to, um, or more tokens, whatever tokens are taken here to represent, is not going to actually improve performance. We've hit some kind of, some, some different kind of obstacle here. I'll give you, a give you a look at some of these. Accuracy and thinking tokens versus problem complexity. Okay, we find here, Keep in mind here for Tower of Hanoi, here's the collapse point for all the different models, place where their accuracy falls between five and 10. And what do we see between one and five? Steep increases in their use of thinking tokens. But then as the complexity continues to rise, they go past the collapse point, they begin investing. They begin investing less and less, some, sometimes far less token power into trying to crack these 10, 15, and 20 level disks, uh, disk problems. Something similar happening here, a fall off in uh, resource use as, as and after, right, right after the accuracy collapse point. Okay. Same with blocks, similar for river crossing as well. Although curiously here, a little bit more of a flat line for some of these models with regard to these others. Looks most steep, the drop with uh, Tower of Hanoi. Lastly, two more things that uh, happen, two more observations here about what happens inside the thoughts of reasoning models. They investigate the, uh, the, think, the reasoning traces inside these large reasoning models. 
that um, and what they find here is that at low levels of complexity for Tower of Hanoi, one, two, three disks, the computer is actually overthinking the problem. It's devoting more of its overall time, so to speak, and effort to investigating wrong answers than to investigating right answers. But as we get up higher here, it's spending, it's arriving at the, uh, the right answer with more, the use of more, more of its uh, thinking time. So similar crossing here. Then we hit the collapse point, and there are no more right answers above n equals 10. Then the last thing I want to point out here in section 4.4, this is to me the most mind-blowing result of this paper. As shown in these following figures, in the Tower of Hanoi environment, even when we provide the algorithm in the prompt so that the model only needs to execute the prescribed steps, performance does not improve, and the observed collapse still occurs at roughly the same point. This is fascinating to me. Even when you give it in its, in its prompting the algorithm to follow, it doesn't follow the algorithm. It works in its own way uh, and arrives at the same kind of accuracy collapse around n equals 8 disks for Tower of Hanoi. This is noteworthy because finding and devising a solution of its own should be should require more computation than merely executing a given algorithm. And this further highlights the limitations of reasoning models, suggesting that further research is needed. Well, it certainly seems to me to be so. And I think this is the place where, uh, as my friend Zach pointed out, the uh, what they've shown here is that the current LLMs and LRMs, AIs, are not capable of reasoning algorithmically. They're not arriving at that kind of algorithmic knowledge where they get it. They see the logic inherent in the puzzle at every level of complexity. They seem to be able to do it up to a certain point to get the right answers, but they're not actually um, getting it, so to speak. They don't have the Even when you give them the algorithm, it still puzzles me that that's the case. Despite providing the solution algorithm in the prompt, execution failure occurs at similar points. Okay, so with or without the algorithm, yep, right around the uh, certain level of complexity, accuracy goes to zero. So I'm only on page 11 of this 30-page paper. There's an appendix. There's quite a lot of data following in it. I'd recommend that you read the whole thing. But I think I've gone about as far as I reasonably can in giving my commentary on this paper. Thanks again to my friend Zach Robinson uh, of Rising Tide, um, who they work in Last Mile Logistics. Give them a look. Give them uh, give them uh, a name. Give them a call if that's the kind of thing that you need. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching today. Goodbye.